Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Crystal Briefs. My channel has passed 500 subs and I want to thank you so much for your support. When I started this, I never thought that I'd reach this milestone this early. So thank you so much and I really appreciate your continuous support. Since some of you have asked me to do the basics on comps and wonder rallies, I'm starting on that. In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of Fortune 4 for those of you who would like to newly join War of Wonders or help in Dragon Arena. So what is Fortune 4 to begin with? It represents a comp used mostly for Wonder Rallies. It's a convention in this game to express troop composition as three digits of number, each of which is assigned to Imp, Ranged, and Cab respectively. In 4 to 4, it means you have 40% in, 20% ranged, and 40% cap, adding up to 100%. People also refer to 4 to 4 as 8 for 8, which is exactly the same thing, but as 20 divisions instead, so that you can make more precise adjustments to your comp. And there goes some features of 4 to 4. It's quite versatile, and you can beat most comps with it if the opponent is at your level or lower. It's easy to win even if you don't have much understanding of the mechanisms of war as long as you're using it correctly. Apart from Cav Wedge, all formations work with 4 to 4. I've actually never seen a situation in which 4 to 4 Cav Wedge becomes the best formation to use. Maybe against Inf Blast, but that's an irregular situation. Cav Wedge does work sometimes, but there is always a better formation than that. If you know about a situation in which 4 to 4 Cav Wedge becomes the best option, let me know in a comment. 4 to 4 also has a potential to be a lot stronger lead and that's why it's the most popular variant. So I'll go through everything you need to know before using 4 to 4 in one or rallies. First is your talent. You should have all the army HP and attack maxed. And with the rest of the available points, you should increase individual attack stats equally. Some people just do the infant cab, which I don't recommend because there are quite a lot of situations in which ranged attack becomes important. 4 to 4 cab on cab situation, for example. You can ignore army defense. Next is your gear. For non champ gear, you don't have a lot of options. The one at the top is the best gear set for overall stats, but generally, cab HP suffers so you can choose to swap one of the cups with the blight ring to give more HP for the cab and use cab phalanx more e effectively. The one at the bottom is the cheaper alternative. Your stats will become inf and ranged heavy, which is totally fine as long as your cab is not more than 100% away from your ranged. Also, troop comp itself is much more important than stats distribution, so don't worry too much about your stats. But if possible, you should adjust the stats distribution with the jewels. For 4 to 4, you should jewel in either 3 fundamental attack jewels or 2 attack jewels and champ jewel to give you more army HP if available. Army HP is really important and I'll delve into the relationships between a formation and stat distribution in later videos. If you're a half champ player, a lot of people tend to go for this. It looks nice. But that's it. It's not the most practical in terms of the stats. Instead of the cab main hand and the off hand, it's better to make champion faith, which requires exactly the same number of mains, and will give significantly more overall stats and HP for the cab. Furthermore, for the same astralite level, winner mids is better than champion light in the majority of cases, so I'd suggest you go for the accessory before the main hand and the off hand, but it's ultimately up to you. Moving on to heroes, the hero comp is quite important, and for beginners, you should have two ranged heroes despite the ranged troop count, because the number of ranged heroes affect the retargeting sequence dramatically if both you and your opponent is in ranged front, which occurs quite frequently. 2 to 1 hero comp is only beneficial against 4 for 2 variant, so if you know the opponent is only going to use 4 for 2 variant, it's okay to have 2 to 1 hero comp. But for educated leads, 4 to 4 using 2 to 1 hero comp is a juicy prey for several reasons I haven't touched. 
so I'd recommend using 122 Hero Comp for beginners since it's the most mistake proof. 212 Hero Comp is for those who are determined not to use ranged front, which is actually possible. But against someone like me, I'll be able to make you use ranged front, so 212 Hero Comp is still risky. With that in mind, my suggestions for hero lineup is this for pay to play. You could also use Storm Fox instead of the Rose Knight, but where Cav receives damage, the Rose Knight tends to outperform Storm Fox. If you have 11k heroes, obviously you can just swap that in for the same troop type. For free to play, this would be the best for you. Next is about familiars. For pay to play, since the pack 5 familiar damage is proportional to your troop count, you should choose infant calf pack 5 familiars. Don't put ranged pack 5 familiars unless you want to strategically transition your calm to a ranged heavy one. Shield and Griffin are quite useful, so any of these lineup are available for different purposes. Calf Shield is good when using Calf Phalanx, and Inf Shield can enable Inf Phalanx to tolerate Calf Increased 442 variant. Also, it's important that having Calf Shield don't actually limit your choice of formation. Sometimes, choosing the right formation is much more important than getting the shield to activate. Helldrider, the new familiar, will join in if you can direct the skill towards the counter of your front. The use of Helldrider will be discussed more in future videos. For free to play, Tempestite and Griffin would definitely be in. Also, the stackers for Inf and Cav especially may be useful. And the new familiar talent can be used if you have full slots available. If you have shield familiars by any chance, then they'll definitely be in. Next up is formations. Here are the extremely basic choices of formation against some characteristic comps. We can start from there. The thoughts behind these choices are that you should take the hit in formation that give you the least amount of damage regardless of formation the opponent is going to use. 442 has low cap, so in phalanx would take the least damage. Or if you're even lost with which formation to use, Start from ranged phalanx and that'll allow you to win quite often unless the opponent is smarter than you, the reason of which will be explained in later videos. In fact, a lot of leads have started from there, and some leads have learned to diversify choices of formation while others stick to ranged phalanx predominantly, yet wins quite often still. These are more detailed table for which formation to choose for each example situation that you can study in your own time. Moreover, there are fundamental mechanisms you should be aware of in mixed versus mixed situations. Provided that both sides have equal stats for all troop types and are 1-1-1 one, one, one comp, in phalanx beats calf foul, calf foul beats ranged foul, and ranged foul beats in foul mechanistically. This is because by allowing the backline troops to keep doing max damage and quickly kill enemy front that counters your front, it indirectly protects your front from damage while causing huge loss on the enemy at the same time. That'll be discussed in more detail in later videos. Although that won't always be true when various other factors come into play like troop type features, stats, familiars, and comps, preserving damage source against the enemy front throughout a 40 second battle is a fundamental concept to learn to be able to beat the opponent effectively. So I think this video would be a good starting point if you want to nearly join War of Wonders. Obviously the explanation are extremely shallow and I didn't include a lot of things that many of you are probably expecting me to talk about. So I don't want you to complain that it's too simple because I get that wholeheartedly. And I really appreciate if you look forward to my future content. Don't forget to subscribe if you like my video. Thanks for watching and see you later.